This is episode 33 of the Home and Family Culture Podcast. I'm Jody Chafee. In this episode, I interviewed Kelly McCarty of Toys with Intent. Welcome to the Home and Family Culture Podcast, where I discuss how families can discover and design their collective vision, values, beliefs, and traditions that influence their family culture. In this podcast, I interview experts who offer tips and tools to inspire families in this process of developing their family culture, and also successful individuals whose success was influenced by their family culture growing up. Be sure to check out the show notes for this and every episode at homeandfamilyculture.com, where you can subscribe for my weekly newsletter filled with updates on the podcast and blog, as well as other tidbits of information I like to add. You can listen to this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, or YouTube. Please subscribe to your favorite medium. You can also find me on social media at Family Culture Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest, and at underscore Family Culture on Twitter. Be sure to comment, follow, like, rate, and share. But enough about all of that. Let's get to the episode. Thank you for listening. Kelly McCarty is a marriage and family therapist and has worked as a school counselor in both the San Francisco Bay Area and in Houston. Her experience includes working in a Waldorf school, charter schools, public schools, and a top private college prep school. In addition to schools, Kelly also has experience in play therapy, individual and family therapy, and teaching social-emotional curriculum. Kelly has worked in schools and the mental health field for over 10 years, and has recently launched her new business, Toys with Intent, a site dedicated to providing social and emotional toys, products, and resources for children and teens. Her mission is to help parents raise children to be emotionally intelligent and to also help parents be intentional regarding the toys and products they bring into their homes. Kelly lives in Southern California with her husband and two children, and you can find her on Facebook and Instagram. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. So glad you could come. So tell us more about this, the inspiration behind your Toys with Intent. It sounds really awesome and really aligning with the, the message that I'm trying to help get out there. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So I think it started really from my work as a, a high school counselor. Um, I used to have parents or students constantly asking me, you know, do you have anything that you can help me with my anxiety? Or do you have a book you'd recommend on how to talk with your kids about like healthy relationships? Or do you have a good journal that I can use to write my thoughts in? Mm -hmm. And so on and so on. So I was always asked these questions. Um, So I was really familiar with a lot of good and helpful products out there already. And then I started having my own children. um, And I started to take kind of a similar approach to the products and toys with my own kids. Mm-hmm. So all the books and things I recommended to my students and families, they, they all helped in some way. They taught them something. They served a purpose. And I wanted to do kind of a similar thing for my own kids. So, and, and to be totally honest, I was pretty appalled um, <laughs> at some of the toys and TV shows and products out there mm-hmm. uh, that were designed for young children. Um, they weren't really helpful. They weren't really teaching them anything. And some of them were actually kind of harmful in a way. Yeah. So around my children's birthdays and Christmas and gift giving, I often would just say, no gifts, please. Because um, I didn't know how to say, well, I don't really want that toy gun, but I'll take that book on empathy, right? Okay. <laughs> just see what toys to get. So that whole philosophy of basically choosing better toys and products um, is what it's what fueled toys with intent. Um, so basically I put all these wonderful toys and products, um, on one page. Uh, so parents could find it really easily and essentially all the toys and things on there teach social and emotional skills. So, um, it's a place where you can find toys and products that really help your children grow. Uh, so that, that's what it is. A hub for children zero to 18 with all the good stuff on there for like empathy, growth mindset, healthy bodies and, and so on. I love that. I think more and more I've been hearing this where people are saying, just don't give us anything <laughs> because, mm-hmm. you know, because we keep most of the time it's because they, there's, they have a clutter issue, but I think mm-hmm. that you have a really good point. That's like, 
so many times it's really easy to just walk through the toy store and pick something up that has no purpose <laughs> except to maybe mm-hmm. distract our kids for a little while. And, and even those, our kids don't even play with them for very long. They just end up playing with the box if they're babies or, you know, things like that, or, or they play with them and it ends up in a heap somewhere and it doesn't really have any purpose. And so, yeah, more and more I hear that from parents. They're like, I just don't want any gifts or, or they're Mm -hmm. trying to somehow find a way to communicate with their families. Like these are the kind of gifts that we want and, and stop Mm -hmm. sending us this fluff that we don't end up getting, or it's just adding to the pile of the garbage heap and, and -hmm. things like that. So even worse, something that um, actually is kind of counterintuitive to yeah. what you're trying to... Yeah, so I think even worse, there's even some products out there that are kind of harmful. And mm-hmm. it's not even fluff. It actually goes um, against what I'm trying to kind of teach my children. Um, I often use the example of Barbie, not to harp on her. But um, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm trying to instill in my daughters that what's on the inside is what counts. And you're beautiful just the way you are and all these things. Yet if you you look at a Barbie and what she represents, it's actually kind of not my values. <laughs> um, but yet we get Barbies all the time as gifts, right? right. So some of it's not even fluff. It's actually things that I, I don't believe in. Right, right. And so that's why it's so important to have this idea of what your family culture is, what your values are, what you, you, know, you want your intention for your kids, and then align what you bring into your home with what those values are. And that's, I love that that's what your, your sounds like your like, mission is. And uh, mm-hmm. that's actually something um, over Christmas, I started this non-toy gift list. And, and part of mm-hmm. when I wrote the article for it was, you know, start with your vision of what you want for your family, because mm-hmm. there's what you bring into your home may either align to that vision or it will mess it up. (laughs) And so you have to start with that vision. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how would you define family culture? Yeah, that's a good question, you know, and I, I hadn't really thought much about it and that's why I'm so appreciative of what you do and kind of, of your exploration of this concept. So, I mean, you got me thinking, so great. Um, I really think, you know, family culture is kind of the unwritten norms, the traditions, the kind of nuances of a family. Mm -hmm. Um, It's kind of what makes a family tick, right? It's the core of who they are and what they believe in. Um, That kind of, to me, speaks to family culture. And to your point, what you bring in the home either aligns or doesn't align with that family Mm -hmm. culture. Um, and I think sometimes as parents and, and just people, we tend to miss the fact that um, toys are tools, right? They're, they're teaching our children messages every day, um, whether we realize it or not. Some of it's very conscious and some of it's unconscious. Um, but if as a family and as a part of our family culture, we choose to read books, let's say, on kindness or self-esteem or we play mindfulness games or we use a toy that teaches how to help regulate our anger. We're actually incorporating our family culture and our values through the play. So I think toys just can very, very much align or disalign with your family culture. Yeah. And like you said that it's the norms and things like whether or not we realize it, we have a family culture. And so Mm -hmm. it's, it's something that you don't, unless you're being intentional about it, you don't really think about it, but it's there, you know, whatever Mm -hmm. you, whatever you default to, whatever you fall back on, if you're, if your default mm-hmm. is to go pick up a Barbie every time somebody needs a gift, then that's your, that's your culture. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. so it's like, but, but my goal and my mission is to help people. And it sounds like yours too, to think about it before you just yep. go out and, and try and reshape what your norms and your defaults are to something that's mm-hmm. more intentional so that you're not just, oh, well, this is what we've always done. And, or, <laughs> or, oh, this mm-hmm. is what's easiest. Because sometimes Mm -hmm. it's not what's easiest is what's best for our families, right? Oh, Oh my gosh. (laughs) Right? It sounds Mm -hmm. like you have experience with that. (laughs) I mean, I I always um, took a lot of heat for saying no gifts, right? Because that's actually kind of counter to our culture. That's Mm -hmm. um, very consumer-based and um, very instant gratification. Um, so I think I struggled a little bit, um, and, and I had to kind of deal with a lot of backlash from family and friends because their family culture is very, very different toys everywhere, loud toys, toys that make all these noise toys that, you know, 
in my view, aren't very intentional. Mm -hmm. Um, So sometimes family cultures butt up against other ones and um, that can cause a little bit of discomfort and you can have to work your way through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've had a couple of interviews where, you know, people who, uh, you know, kids come over to their house and they expect to play video games or something. Just go, no, that's not part of our, our home and our family. We want to do something different. We want to have, Uh you know, better interaction and, and not just staring at a screen side by side, but (laughs) actually looking Mm -hmm. at each other. And so, yeah, that can, well, um, my last interview about that, she said that sometimes her, her, she felt like her her kids kind of lost out on some friends. But then yeah. it was like, you know, but on one hand, that's sad. But on one hand, it's like, you you know, you do have to be part of your family culture is the friends that you have, <laughs> you know, right? And okay. and the people that you bring into your life as well. And um, on one hand, it can cause damage. But on the other hand, people might come into your home and see your example and the feeling that's there and mm-hmm. want to emulate that. And that that's, that's another part of my mission with my podcast is let's reshape our family culture so that we can then go out and shape the world and, and make it be an influence mm-hmm. good on, and what's going on mm-hmm. in the world to try and change that, you know, try and if, if more and more families can be more intentional about the things they bring into their home and the way they spend their time, then that starts to spread you know, people might start to see that and say, you know, that seems to be working for them. Maybe that's something we could, we could try <laughs> mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, how, and how important that is to, to try and be intentional so that we can then spread that, that our values and our families are more important than Barbie and <laughs> more important than video games and mm-hmm. those things that we can bring into our, our homes. Awesome. Yeah. And not only, and not only that, I mean, I think it teaches our children that what do you do when you have families or schools or people that don't align with your values, right? I mean, that's a lesson that um, our children have to learn is that not everyone's going to see this, the world the same way we do, but how do you incorporate that sense of self, um, that, that value of your own that you feel so strongly and passionate about that you're not going to cave just because, America tells you it's based on consumerism, right? So enabling our children to kind of have that strong sense of self that that's maybe how a different family does it, but this is how we do it. And this is why. Um, So I think it helps to to, uh, kind of strengthen their core with it too. Totally, totally. And it gives them, you know, that ability to cope with our differences. Mm -hmm. Like it's okay, we're different. Mm -hmm. This is what we do. This Mm -hmm. is what we do. (laughs) Awesome. Mm -hmm. So what else can parents do to be more conscientious about what things they bring into our homes? Yeah, so before I buy anything, I always ask myself, um, you know, what is this toy, product, book, thing actually teaching my child? And, you know, I touched on this earlier, but I think in a culture of consumerism and instant gratification, we just tend to be a little mindless with our purchasing. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I literally wrote an article about Target specifically <laughs> that makes makes us do this, right? We just mm-hmm. get in there and we yeah. just start consuming. Um, so, I mean, at the end of the day, it's about being intentional, um, mindful, pausing to ask yourself that pretty, it's a pretty simple and straightforward question, yet it, it's pretty amazing how much we overlook this pause. Mm-hmm. Um, Put it in front of our children um, and we don't really think about it. And, you know, I, I use this example. There's a pretty popular book series called Pinkalicious. I don't know. Uh-huh. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah. Okay. So it's for, it's for little girls. Um, and someone gifted it to, to my daughter and she really liked it. But honestly, when I stopped and read the message it was giving her, it, it essentially said, cry until you get what you want and lie to adults. And so I realized that book didn't align with our mission. That's not yeah. part of my family culture. That's not what I believe in. That's not what we're trying to teach. So it really didn't belong in our house. So, you know, Pinkalicious disappeared. And to be honest, my daughter didn't even notice, right? Mm-hmm. So yet there's there's another example of a great book called Dear Girl. And um, throughout the book, it has a beautiful message about how to stand up for yourself, how to be kind, how to be... An, basically awesome girl. And when I stop and read the book, I said, yes, this aligns with what I'm trying to instill in my child. So it really comes down to taking that extra minute just to pause and ask that 
subtle question and, and just see what is it teaching. And that can make the biggest difference in the world with what products you bring into the home. Awesome. I 100% love that what you just said. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's true. It just takes a minute. Like just stop and be aware of what, what your kids are, are consuming and what you mm. choose for them, you know, because mm. it is everything has, if not a direct message, a very subliminal message, you know, it's mm. like you can, mm. you know, you can say, oh, just go read a book, but even books, mm -hmm. you have to question and, mm. and ask, you know, is this something that aligns with our values? And I was going to say the same thing about Pinkalicious. I was like, mm. she's so whiny. <laughs> I've got a whole list of toys that are essentially banned from my house because it's literally teaching children the exact opposite of what you're trying to do. Um, and a lot, there's a lot of stuff out there that does it that we don't even, we don't even realize, but yeah. every toy serves a purpose. And like I said, consciously or unconsciously, your child is getting a message. They learn through play. That's how they grow. That's how they process. Everything is done through play and toys and all of that. So um, if we're not careful, they could be getting some really poor messages. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's interesting. Like what you said is that everything has a message. And mm -hmm. like I said about our family culture, everybody has a family culture, whether we know it or not. And mm -hmm. that's, that's a really good point. What are some more uh, toys and books that are on your list of things that uh, instill appropriate or better good messages? So the good ones, not the bad ones, right? Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure we have a plenty of the bad ones. I was going to say, like I was going to say, we, you know, as much as we love Disney, I will never let my kids watch Disney. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. all of their kids, like all the teenagers are all so, the, the parents are never even around. And then when I they know. are, they're always arguing or fighting. And I'm just like, no, never are my mm -hmm. kids going to watch these Disney shows. They're a terrible message. But anyways, except for Good Luck Charlie, right? Like Good Luck Charlie. <laughs> but even that one. Um, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I wrote an article kind of how to make that shift. Right. And I said, yeah. for example, instead of um, Disney characters, use the Moodsters characters. So they're someone that I talk about a lot on my website because they um, they're little I don't know, animals of some sort. But th their whole mission is to teach kids about feelings. And there's a, a guy named Razzie who's about anger. And there's a girl named Lolly about love. And there's someone for sadness. So there's those are characters, right, that are pretty simple that my three-year-old, four-year-old doesn't know the difference between that and a Disney character. I mean, if since I've used them from day one, she thinks they're great, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of like a subtle change. I always say instead of Disney, use the Moodsters. Um, I have tons of books on empathy and kindness. Um, for shows, I always say kind of change the channel from... Paw Patrol to Daniel Tiger, right? Which is a spinoff of yeah. um, Mr. Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to get into screen time. I know that's not wonderful, but there, even screen time, there's at least some good stuff out there that if they're going to watch it, why not give them something that teaches them about social emotional skills? Yeah. Um, so Daniel Tiger, a huge fan of um, that book, Dear Girl, I just found, which is just amazing. Um, even board games. I mean, you can switch Monopoly out for, there's a cool board game called Q's Wonder. Um, and it talks about social skills and manners and that sort of thing. So literally everything in your house, you can pretty much incorporate a social emotional skill by just replacing it with a better toy. Um, Cause they're all out there. It's just, matter of finding them. Yeah, that's great. I love hearing about this. And then the different ways that we can bring in, you know, because part of my list that I had in December was for my non-toy gift list. It also mm -hmm. included, you know, time that we can spend with our, with our families. Yeah. You know, it doesn't always have to be always have yes. to be about those things that the things it can be about the mm -hmm. quality time the connection and if those things that we bring into our homes encourage connection mm -hmm. then it's a hundred times better than anything that we could bring into our families into our homes right <laughs> absolutely and uh, yeah I, I feel 100 percent. and it's not like I'm uh, I actually don't like a lot of toys um and that's you know, part of the reason I did the no gifts, it doesn't have to be to your point, like a uh, actual object. Um, yeah. just, simply, I mean, I love what you wrote about in your list and your ideas, just spending quality time is a gift. I mean, it really, really is. Yeah. And yet we don't even think about it like that. Yeah. So 
and a whole kind of non tangible gifts too. I think that was a that was a great list and a great thing you brought up. So what can we do to talk to our families then about around gifts giving time? What are some what's some of your advice about how we can talk to our, our families about the gifts and activities they offer for our kids? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, giving some simple suggestions like, um, you know, we're really focusing on building family communication in our house. Um, so there's a great family talk board game that we would love. Um, I think that'd be perfect for Johnny's birthday, right? So you're kind of saying, you know, here's what we're working on as a family. And literally, here's here it is. Um, or, for example, Sally's really into kindness lately. There's a few books that are um, about being kind to others others that I know she would love. So actually directing them to specific themes or topics um, is a really good way to, dis- to suggest gifts um, or activities um, you might want your children to actually get. And then, like I said, there's also the non-gifting gifts, um, mm-hmm. and you have great great ideas on how to do that. Um, now that I have the website up, I basically just tell my friends and family, just go to the three to six year old category and pick something from there because everything on that side, I know that I obviously hand selected and I like, Uh so I actually reference point before it was pretty challenging. Like I said, to say, well, you know, get her a book on, um, healthy bodies, right? My grandpa is going to be like, what? Yeah. (laughs) So Uh the website (laughs) it actually gives people a place to go. So that's part of the reason why I like referencing it because it, it can be gifts for kids too. I love that. So your site is a really great reference and resource for us to say, where is a gift about this, you know, about kindness, about empathy, about, you know, the, the intention, whatever that is that you have for your family to go there and find, find those, those gifts that could be useful for that purpose. I think that's, mm-hmm. that's great. That's awesome that, that your site is that awesome resource because I think it's really hard. You go on and like you say, going into Target and you're flooded with, you know, the consumerism, you're flooded with distractions. I mean, anytime I go into Walmart with my kids, they are always asking for something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and so it can be really hard to, to uh, know where to look, to find mm-hmm. what those things are that are going to serve that purpose and that intention. So mm-hmm. more resources that we have to direct us as parents to say, where can I find a book mm-hmm. about blank? You know, where can I find, I mean, yeah, you can know, you could probably go on Pinterest, right? Mm-hmm. You on Pinterest lists of books and toys and things that you can search. Yeah. You know, here are a list of, list of books that are good for boys at this age or things like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, um, Part of the reason, too, is that because I'm a therapist and because I'm a school counselor, I kind of I had so much experience with kind of books around certain topics, of course, in the younger grades, bullying and kindness and relationship aggression for girls. And there's different themes that kind of pop up as children grow. Um, So I really got to experience and delve into a lot of the products and books that are um, on the site. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes. Um, there's tons of great recommendations out there. Um, and obviously Amazon gives you ratings and that sort of thing. But um, I, I always ask counselors <laughs> and teachers, right? I mean, they're the ones, they're on the front line. Mm, yeah. They deal with the curriculum. They really understand childhood development. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, that's, that's what we studied. So yeah. I think it helps you to have um, an extra kind of set of eyes, uh, a therapist or someone kind of look through it and be like, oh yeah, this is perfect for their developmental, you know, place. And certainly there's plenty of people out there, like you mentioned Pinterest and that, that mm-hmm. have some really resources too. Sure. But like you said, that's a really good point. Like e- there may be those lists out there, but is it somebody that you can trust? You still have to mm-hmm. review them mm-hmm. yourself. You yep. still have to, you know, if, if you can seek advice from mm-hmm. a second opinion of like, is this really an okay thing to, to bring into our home? Is this book really going to teach the, the principles and characteristics that we want our kids to, to see? You still mm-hmm. have to, like we say, we, we've been saying stop. Yeah. Review what it is <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and evaluate whether it is something that, that you really want and to be conscientious yep. about that. Mm-hmm. Love it. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So Kelly, what are your favorite books that you like to recommend to families? 
So okay. one of my favorites, this is a kind of an oldie, but um, is the five love languages of children. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you heard of that book before? I've read it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. So yeah. yeah, it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty uh, familiar. A lot of people know it. But you know, what I like about it is that every kid is different. I mean, you have four kids, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> okay. So, you know, probably from personal experience that your eldest is probably very different from your youngest. Yeah. Um, you know, that book really talks about finding what works for your own child. And that could be different from your first to your third or your fourth or your fifth. Yep. Um, and, you know, some kids really, their love language is quality time and spending that one-on-one time with them. And so, for example, that's a great birthday gift, right? Is yeah. you and mom go get a manicure together, whatever it is. And, you know, funny enough, some kids love languages are gifts. I mean, that's in there. So I think um, knowing your kid, knowing what makes them tick um, is actually going to help with this kind of gift giving thought process. Mm-hmm. Um, so the five lang- love languages is just, I don't know, it's an oldie but goodie. I really, yeah. I really enjoy it. Totally. Um, the other one that's, you know, really popular right now is The Whole Brain Child um, okay. by Dan Siegel. Um, have you read that one? I have not read yet that one yet. Yeah. Okay, so Dan Siegel is just a genius. Um, he's really smart. He's, a, he's very sciencey because he's just super smart. Mm-hmm. Um, but he talks a lot about how the brain is wired and, um, and talks about kind of how it works in child and how it develops. But he also gives such great examples of how to work with kids and raise them to be happier and healthier. So um, I think his tag in there is like 12 steps or 12 different ways to work with children to make them resilient, empathic, all these things you want in a child. Mm -hmm. Um, The whole brain child basically teaches you how to do it. So um, that's a really, a really good one. Um, And then my last one, I'm kind of cheating on this because it's not a book, but um, (laughs) there's these... um, peacemaker cards that are on my site mm-hmm. um, designed by uh, Gener- Generation Mindful. But every card in the deck has an affirming message um, mm-hmm. and it's all designed to nurture social and emotional s- skills. So it's a quick game you can play as a family with your children, maybe five minutes a day. Um, and you just kind of go through and you talk about the affirmations and it's just a really great way to start your day with your children, very positive, And it talks about these important skills. So although, although it's not a book, it's a really just great kind of relationship builder for, for families and parents. It's a good resource. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Cool. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I'm going to have to Thank check you. out the whole brain child one. I think I've heard of it. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's, I love those kinds of books that teach you about the, how to learn and know your children. I really liked, mm-hmm. like, uh, the child whisperer. I don't know if you've heard of that. Oh, one. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. it's just the different things that you can learn about your kids is so useful because you learn, like, like you said, how do they tick and what, what motivates them and, and what's inspiring to them. And, and it's, it's really cool to learn about, and, it, and then you learn about yourself in the process too. And, oh, yeah. and then, yeah. um, you know, and just remember that how or learn and remember how to t- treat them, how they want to be treated, what's going to help their development and everything. I love that. Because <laughs> if you're not speaking the, their love language, you might as well be speaking Spanish, right? Or a foreign <laughs> language to them because they're not going to connect with it. Yeah. So uh, that's why that love language book is so just, just beautiful in that way. That's awesome. Awesome. All right, Kelly. I really love everything that you're doing and I want to direct our audience to your services. Can you tell us what your URL is and your where to find you on Facebook and Instagram? Sure, definitely. So the website is um, www.toyswithintent.com. Um, so it's the way it's set up. It's a little bit unique. Most of the products on there are through affiliate links. So mm-hmm. kind of like what I talked about before, I did most of the research put them all in one spot and then direct you where to buy it. Mm -hmm. So the good news, bad news in that is that most of the stuff on there, you can get through Amazon, which I know people love. Um, Some of the products on there are through smaller companies um, like generation mindful. I had just mentioned, Mm -hmm. and then we do toys with intent has a couple of their own products too. So it's kind of a hodgepodge. Um, But just so the the listeners know, um, we have a lot of different categories. I kind of touched on some of them, but um, 
there's there's stuff for specific issues like anxiety, mm-hmm. but then there's also stuff for like growth mindset, empathy, healthy bodies, family relationships, um, emotion regulation and feelings, which is my biggest section because I can never talk more about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, the four parents section. So that's all um, can be found on toyswithintent.com. And then, yes, I have a Facebook page, Toys With Intent, and then also um, Instagram, Toys With Intent as well. So I'm all there. (laughs) Happy to connect. I'm starting the Pinterest process. That's a little bit foreign to me, but I'm working on that, um, getting up there as well, too. Uh, Any final words you want to leave with, with our parents? And our listeners? No, just um, like you're saying, just being intentional, you know, taking that extra minute. Uh, It's a little bit more work like we talked about, but totally worth it, right? Just pausing for that minute, Um, whether it's any of this values, family culture, toys, products, whatever. um, Just just actually pausing to think about what we're doing um, can make all the difference in the world. And you, you preach that same thing. So I love that. And to be, to go through what's already in your home. Yeah. And figure Mm, out what's there and decide, you know, what's going to work for you. I'm actually on a, on a kick right now for purging. (laughs) And so, Mm, I mean, I've, I read the Conmarie book and that one was interesting. Mm -hmm. And, um, Mm -hmm. but I just read this other book uh, called um, clutter busting and it's about Mm. like why we hold on to certain things. Yeah. And so it's a good idea to just like go through each thing and really evaluate, is it going to serve our family with the values yep. that we want? And, yep. and then go, you know what? It's not, toys are not, our things are not, we are not our things <laughs> is what, you know, it comes down to, you know, you just let go of things that don't serve your family. And if it's mm-hmm. something that you go, well, I just spent a lot of money on this thing, but it's not serving your family or it's not, uh, you're not using it, then you should let it go. So it's not serving as a reminder of the amount of money you spent on it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, so totally. it's really, it's a really interesting take on it. So that one, that book I really enjoyed, it doesn't really go into the mechanics of, of getting rid of things. I, I recommend the book called getting organized the clear and simple way for that. Okay. But okay. this book, Clutter Busting, really goes into the mindset about why we hold on to stuff. And so mm. I think it is a really good um, an important part of this process of, yeah. of what you have in your home, what you're bringing into their home, is figuring out what's already there <laughs> and whether it's so, serves your family. So, so and I'm sure we could have a whole other episode about <laughs> the way people <laughs> rotate things or the way that we go mm-hmm. through stuff. But I think that it's a really good place to start is going through what's in your home, yeah. evaluating if it serves your family. So, And it's okay to hide things or remove them. You know, like I said, the story of Pinkalicious, I, I, uh, she left, she left the building and you know what? That's okay. My daughter recouped and don't be afraid to take the stuff away that you think your kids are so attached yeah. to, right? Because yeah. they move on. They're, yeah. they're resilient. Well, and Conmarie would say, thank the book for teaching you yeah. what you don't value and let it go. <laughs> There you go. See you later, Pink Delicious. <laughs> Thanks for teaching us what we don't want. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kelly. It was a delight talking with you. Great. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Thank you so much for being on the show, Kelly. It was so awesome to learn about your site and the resources that you have available. It's such a good point that we need to make sure that that we're asking the right sources about what toys and games and books and things really are going to serve our family and the values that we want to instill in our homes. So in this process of being intentional about our family culture, a big, big part of that are the things that we bring into our home. So please come on to my show notes at homeandfamilyculture.com and see the links and things that I posted there uh, associated with this episode. Be sure to check out Kelly's site, www.toyswithintent.com, for her lists. And they're awesome. She's got really great resources and things. So please go check it out. You can listen to this podcast, like you probably know because you're listening to it, but you can share it on iTunes and Spotify and YouTube and LinkedIn or tune in <laughs> and I'm on LinkedIn but you can you could just look me up there uh, 
But you can find me also on Instagram and Facebook at Family Culture Podcast and on Twitter at underscore Family Culture. Thank you so much. Please like and share and rate and comment. I'd love to hear back from you what you'd like to hear about in this podcast. And you can learn about the books that I recommend by going to homeandfamilyculture.com slash books. Thank you for listening.